This is Calvin Castine. It's the 6th day of November. A chilly, windy Saturday. We're at Saranac Central School, beautiful downtown Pickett's Corners. And we're here for Section 7 Class D Championship Soccer, featuring the team in green, the Shazy Central Rural School Eagles, and the number one seeded Willsboro Warriors, right here, right now, on Hometown Cable. Introduce the lineups. Preston. Garoba. Uh, I guess I'm not going to be able to hear all these. So. Coached by Rob <laughs> Coached by Rob McAuliffe, I don't think so. The flag will give you an idea of the wind that the players, fans, coaches, and referees will be putting up with. But uh, I have moved. Uh, I have moved right here onto the softball field. I am in one of the dugouts. Actually, it's not a dugout, but it's. Even though it's not dug out, it's still called the dugout for the softball games. And we're going to tape from here. Not going to give us our best angle in the world, but we're here taping this. We've got rain showers intermittently, and uh, if we don't uh, claim this spot now, when we do want to get in it, somebody else would be here. Right now it's not raining. And if we waited till it rained, we might have to... Uh, give way for somebody else who already claimed the spot. So we're going to claim the spot and tape the game from here and you'll get what you get. Uh, we thought long and hard about whether we were going to come here. We're not happy that the Section 7 people decide to play these games up here where there's no booth for us and uh, the weather is uh, usually a couple degrees colder here in Pickett's Corners than it is in the lowlands, we've got a little elevation here, you know, we're up climbing the mountains and heading up near Denimora. We're just a couple miles from Denimora. So, it's always a little cooler here. They say they don't go to northeastern because of the wind. Well, let me tell you, I guarantee you there's not any windier at northeastern than it is right here today. They say, well, it's a closer distance for Willsboro. 
So I clocked it. I got on the Northway off route 11. Robert will put it in the air for the Warriors. Um, I clocked it. It took me 17 minutes from Route 11 to where I got off the North Way to head to get on the Katyville Expressway. And it took me 17 minutes from there, actually a little over 17 minutes, to arrive here. So time-wise, because you go through Katyville and you're driving in a 55 mile an hour zone the rest of the way, 35 for a while, 45 for a while, it's just as fast to take the Northway. So the only difference in time between playing here for a team like Willsboro and uh, playing at Northeastern is roughly the time it takes to get from the Northway to Northeastern Clinton, which is probably four minutes. So the distance is not any further for Willsboro to Saranac than it is to Champlain. And uh, it's really no reason why they've never used the northeastern field. Northeastern, uh, these games here, we don't have to worry about lights, but northeastern had lights. They could have played a lot of sectional games there over the years, but somehow the people that run the section have this uh, anti-northeastern attitude, and they won't admit to it, but I'll acknowledge it for them, whether they like it or not. This is what the secret of uh, Willsboro's success is. They break away. Usually one of the Clark girls, Souza picks it up. She wasn't listed when they announced the starter. She wasn't listed. But she's a starter, so Samantha Souza. Clark girls break away. They've scored a pile of goals, a pile of assists. And Sophie, Phoebe, and Edwina Clark. Sophie is 13, Phoebe is 2, and Edwina is 3. Hunted in the air. White throw. Fifteen is Goodrow fighting for it. Let's see here's Drew for the Eagles. Passes it through. And Herbert will pick it up. Aside from not getting a central view, main drawback from taping here is that I also don't have a view of the clock. The clock is in front of us to our right, so you can't see the clock from here. That little perch right there out in the open is where they expect the people to tape from over the top. Expect the me to get up there in the wind and that kind of wind and, and tape out in the open well just ain't gonna happen I want to get up there one time <laughs> that was it that's all I wanted to do thanks but no thanks so it would have been easy to stay home but uh, taping for the community is what I do so I'm here complaining but I'm here Eagles will put it in play. Looks like Lynch. Latchmore trying to fight for it. Looks like Nevada coming back in. Didn't realize he'd gone out. Drew with the head.
throw. Ball comes into Keeble. Another green throw. Green throw. Gay looking for the shot. Shazy has two losses in the MVAC competition this year. 2-1 and 1-0 losses to Willsboro. Shazy was tied. Ball still alive, no whistle. Shazy was tied with Elizabethtown Lewis for the number two seed, and they lost a flip of a coin, so they had to play the semifinal in Elizabethtown. But the Cougars were 3-0 victors over the Lions. Roseboro, meanwhile, was defeating the Keene Central Beavers, and Keene the only team that uh, defeated Willsboro, I believe, during the MVAC season. And back of the goal here. throw to Drew. Another Shazy throw. With the wind, the ball's going to be at that side of the field more than on this side, so we will be spending a lot of time looking through that net as opposed to having a nice view here, but the wind is blowing the ball toward that side, the Route 3 side of the field. Another goal kick for the Warriors. Kicked out by Latour. Willsboro throw. Clark kicks it deep. They like to kick and run. Kick the ball and catch up with it. They've been very successful with that play. So even if the other team keeps the ball down at the, the Willsboro defensive end for a good portion of the game, Willsboro finds a way to get the breakaways and they score two or three goals on breakaways, and that's the difference between a victory and a, and a loss. Here's a shot. Gate to Giroux, just missing. Good row with the throw. Thrown in by... by uh, Keeble. Here's Dupree. Wolf girl gets there first. Nevada sneaks in, steals it away, kicks it back to the 18. Jay comes back for it. Controlled by the Warriors. House tries to go wide with it for Latour. White throw, I think. Get yeah, white throw.
Looks like maybe Latour with the free kick. Stopped by Latramore. Wellsboro goal kick. Shazy is the defending Class D champion team. They uh, won the last couple of years, at least two or three seasons in a row. Looking for a three or four peat here. Coached by my old St. Mary's classmate, and I do mean old, Joe Dumoulin. When he was in high school, he thought soccer was something you used with a cup. Cup and soccer, but, but uh, now he knows the retired uh, lieutenant colonel now teaching at Shazy. That ball stayed in. Drew kicks it out toward the front. There's a shot, and Herbert slides it to the side. It'll be a corner kick for the Eagles. Giroud will take the corner kick with a win to her back. She's an excellent corner kicker. She had to play it right here, though, and put too much on it, and uh, tried to hold up on her kick because of the wind, and kicked it out. So it'll be a goal kick for the Warriors. Do 24 back there. We don't always uh, know who's got the ball for Shazy till they, they see a number. We're just far enough away that we can't always recognize him. Here's Dupree. Nevada giving chase and Ledoux pushes it up to Nevada. Back to Ledoux. Now Latchamore sends it up for Dupree. Quickly thrown back in by Shazy. Nevada pushed off the ball. Whistle. We'll have none of that. Here's a stolen back by the Warriors. Nevada tries to go up to Dupree. Now it's stopped by Lachimora. Ledoux on it. Green throw into Nevada. Ledoux goes down. White throw. Willsboro subs, so they'll rethrow it. Latour ends it up and white throw. Is that good row? Latour Gay. Gay to Giroux. And where's the ball? Way up here. The wind carried it out, so it's Willsboro throw. Section 7 Class D Championship at stake. And Windy Pickett's Corners. Green throw. Tough to get anything on the throw when they're throwing into that kind of wind. At least uh, it's a neutral wind. It's not at either team's back, so 
it, uh, what we read in last, in just in today's paper from last night's games here, uh, Seton Catholic scored three first half goals aided by the wind, and then held on to a 3-1 victory against uh, Northern Adirondack to get the Class C title. Do not know at this point if that game was covered. It was nasty up here. If our buddies Bill Chase and, and or Phelan Miner decided to come up and cover it, we certainly appreciate it, but it's above and beyond the call of friendship and, and uh, help for the community if those guys came up here and taped last night in real nasty weather. Dangerous kick. Called against the Eagles. Here's a shot. The wind's going to turn it. And it's out. The wind makes it hard to control where the ball's going to go in a kick, but uh, also makes it very tough. The goalie will look like Jason Veritek did in the playoffs trying to catch the knuckleballs. It's uh, the wind is going to move the ball, so you can put some force on it, send it in on the goalie. Be tough for the goalie to uh, control it. Here's a goal kick. Referees have switched sides, so we are roughly halfway through the first half. House just barely able to clear it. Big collision in front of the Shazy goal. The tour's down, but back up, I think. Yes. Excuse me, that's Souza who was down and back up. What is this? Supposed to kick it there? That's, I'm not sure if that was a goal kick area or not. It's hard to tell from this, this spot. Lynch will take the throw. Kind of turned a little bit. Close to close right on the borderline of legal there. There's Dupree. A wind <laughs> just trying to go to the wing and the wind just said nope. Well, here's the goal kick. Fifth day of November. First Saturday following the 2004 elections. Latchmore. Quick throw in. Good hustle by Gay. I think that was a say word who came in front and kept her away from the getting good position on that shot. That was a good roll stepping up. Lynch along the sidelines. White throw. This is an all shazy weekend for me. My plan is to tape uh, shazy boys following this in their section 7 title defense. Also against Willsboro. Then tomorrow it's a rededication of uh, Sacred Heart Church. Bishop Robert Cunningham presiding. Gay okay, barreling down. Nice ball. Good hustle from Willsboro. Dupree comes in. Oh, goes against Willsboro. Excuse me, went against Dupree. Well, I'd never call a foul on Dupree, so the refs obviously made a mistake. Another call against 
Shazy. Willsboro will put it in play in a very advantageous spot. This is a scoring spot right here. It just misses. There's the goal kick. Lynch down. Kicked out. Shot in. Off House's head. Kicked in the air. Drew coming back to help out. <coughs> Nevada giving chase. Nevada can't quite come up with it. Goodwill tries to send it up the field. Sent back in. Uh, Dupre. Sent back by the Warriors. That was uh, Phoebe Clark, number two. Herbert will pick it up. Wind's going to blow that out of, of the sidelines, and it'll be green throw. Keeble will take the toss. Dupree picks it up, carries it. Puts it in front of the net. Oh, just missing. Drew just, just missed on that one. Turns, shoots. Uh, to Hulbert, and she recovers before Gay gets there. So Shazy with a nice opportunity. Hulbert will punt it out. Goodwill trying to break it up. Goodwill to Nevada. Green throw. To Dupree. All stayed in. Gay slides it up right to Herbert. There's the punt. One's going to carry it to the sideline and out. Kibo will take the throw. Latchamore fighting for it. White throw. Push, no push. Willsboro trying to fight their way in. White throw off Drew apparently. Not like a bunch of 
fans disagreed with that one. It's really blowing at the moment. The corner flags are almost lying down. White throw. throw. It was Purdy. Purdy's hustle results in a corner kick for Shazy. Giroux will take it. Look right back to Giroux. Here's shot is it's oh oh wow wow Jay-Z two great attempts Eagles really putting the pressure on there there's a throw it's by Keeble up to Purdy Bruce sends it in. Herbert will pick it up. A green throw. Good roll with the toss. Corner kick. Drew will take the corner kick. More barreling in on it. House, I'll clear it. throw into Dupree. There's House. White throw. I'll do it again. Sure if there's subs coming in, what the hold up was. Here's the throw. Headed out. Might be a nose injury for Shay-Z. Coach the one being called over. Not sure if that's uh, Keeble or Howley or who's over on that side right now. Or Latour. Spending quite a bit of time with her. The Saranac ambulance isn't too far away, so if she needs uh, EMT help, there is uh, help available. She's up and walking off. Looks like it could be a nose.
I uh, can't get a number on her. Getting in out of the weather. In the meantime, action will continue. Or resume. Will's barrel throw. A green throw. Kicked out by Keeble. My guess is Latour, based on where the player was playing, or the injured player. We just heard the one minute warning. Sent up by Ledoux. Ouch. Lynch is taken down. Wow. She was taken down and she went down hard. Uh, telling the coach not to come on. That she, she will be all right. And and a lynch will, will rise. Now they're going to stop the clock. She's going to come out. Nope. She's going to stay in. Green kick. New goal kick for the Warriors. Uh, just heard another announcement over the PA. The previous one may have been the two minute although it didn't sound like two minutes when they said it. So this one might have been the one minute. They're supposed to announce two and one, both, now. Hal's going back. seconds. Here's a shot. Yeah! Willsboro scores with about three seconds on the clock. About three seconds on the clock. The Warriors with the wind blowing the ball and on the upper right below the crossbar almost impossible for uh, most girl goalies to even get a finger on those. And they're going to call it a half by the time the clock stops. They're going to call it a half. The goal will count. It's one nothing Willsboro at the half with a goal at the buzzer. What a break for the Warriors. What a bad break for the Eagles. All right, 2.03, we're going. Illegal throw for the Eagles. Missed about 15 seconds on the kickoff. 2.03 start in the second half. 1 nothing Willsboro. Number one seed leading the defending Class D champions. Section 7 Class D final at Pickett's Corners. Frigid downtown Pickett's Corners. Off Lynch, white throw. Dupre throws it in. White throw. So, you remember that uh, 
stoppage of play when uh, Lynch went down on this side. They stopped the clock. I'm not sure if they stopped it immediately or when they started it. But the timing of that, believe it or not, has an impact on the game because a couple of seconds less time on the clock and Willsboro would not have scored. So, even though it's a 40 minute half, a second or two, every once in a while makes a difference. Green throw. And with that sunshine fool you, there's been rain falling and as you can see from the flag, the wind continues to blow at halftime on this Saturday, November 5th. The two state police cars went racing by, sirens and lights are going, heading uh, west of here a ways. Yeah, makes you think that the possibility of an accident. Goodrow passes to Nevada. Goodrow in the air. White throw. Call goes against the Warriors. Eagles put it back in play. We'll do back for it. White, no, green throw. Ladu will take it. Into Latramore. Warriors take it away. House called for the push. Here's the kick, free kick. For the Warriors, dangerous spot to be kicking it. It's out, over the end. Watch more. Up to... Latour. Latour kicks it up. Michael Betts, press photographer. Enjoying the weather. Headed by Latour. Over the head of Latchmore. And the Warriors will bring it back. Again, because of the weather, we're taping this from the front of a, one of the dugouts on the softball field, keeping us out of the wind and out of the rain. But uh, view-wise, it's certainly not the best place to be taping. Dupree offering a helping hand. It's declined. White throw. White throw. Ladu. Another throw for Ladu. Nope. Throws it back for Latramore. Call went against Shay Z. Well, the Warriors will have the kick. This again a scoring opportunity for Willsboro. Souza knocks it down and smothers the ball. A 
or the wind, it's going to be very difficult to judge that ball today. Gay trying to get control, kicks it wide. Lynch catches up with it. Dupree over for the throw. That was a band that played in the early 70s that uh, local band that probably very aptly described what we're having here at the moment for weather. Frozen Sunshine is the name of the band. Frozen Sunshine and that was Tommy Marnes who teaches up here at Saranac. Mark Miro and Dick Cable. And just blew that straight back. Green throw. The batter with the toss. We have a sub coming in. Actually, the person on the horn made a mistake. Was no sub. Nice shot by Dupree. With Gay coming in. There's no sub there for the Eagles, so the Willsboro sub can't come in on a green throw unless there's a, also a green sub coming in. From behind, Goodwill goes down. The batter will put it in play. What? What? Whoa! <laughs> Willsboro boys are in back of us saying, Good call. There wasn't a person in the house outside of the guy who made the, the call who thought that was going to be a, a white kick. Nevada, when curving that ball, and Souza picks it up, which uh, was Sophie, I think. Wind is really blowing at the moment. Remember, one of the reasons they don't have it at Northeastern is because of the wind. <laughs> That's one of the reasons they don't have this playoff games at Northeastern. So they have them here at Saranac, <laughs> where it's windier and colder. Over, picks it up, punts it. Let's see, we are. 12 minutes into the second half. Willsboro leading 1-0. Ledoux with a throw. It'll be a white throw. Looks like good row. Keeps carrying the ball out. Be white throw now. Another Willsboro throw. Moore brings it up. Oh, break away, break away. 
Player down for Shazy, slowly getting up. That was Ledoux. House kicks it out. Another white throw. Good row. White throw. Gay shoots, and the wind's going to blow it away. Nice shot by Gay. The wind said no. Beautiful shot. All right, we have to switch batteries and. Uh, first battery we put in was also dying so we had to switch batteries again so we missed a, a little bit of action and to be honest with you this battery isn't all that strong that's another problem with taping here at uh, Saranac is uh, got to run on batteries and uh, doing a couple games with batteries is uh, a little tough you don't have that much battery power Right to Herbert. Let's see, where are we here? About 17 minutes into the second half. There's Gay. Excuse me, uh, Dupree. Goal kick for the Warriors. Do back for it. Here come the Warriors. There's a shot. It's in. Wow. Heck of a shot for the Warriors. Looks like it might have been 13. That would be, I believe, Sophie Clark. And yeah, Wellsboro takes a commanding 2 0 lead. And Shazy in a 2 nothing hole. They've got uh, a little over 20 minutes remaining. They're the defending champions, Willsboro, the number one seed. So this is who you want in the, the championship game. Of course, the Warriors had that. goal and you can't uh, take away the impact of that late last second goal in the first half you can't take away the importance of that and how it uh, makes for a different game and you play different and you're ahead or behind or or in a tie game trailing by two Shazy will have to be, become more offensive minded and of course that will make for more opportunities at the other end for Willsboro Goodwill sends it up Tor gets there. Latchmore. 
Sends it in. It'll be a goal kick. Warriors will put it in play. White throw. The dual kicks. Follows. Now Gay. Picks by Goodrow. Off Dupree, no, off Lynch. A white throw. Well thrown into Latrimore, passes back to Ledoux. White throw. Latimore kicks the goal kick wide to Ledoux. Nice ball. Kicked wide by Latour. Latour or Keeble, not sure. There's Keeble over. Ledoux sends it up in the air. It doesn't get far with that wind. Willsboro throw. Sub coming in. White throw. Souza will pick it up. I punt. Fans enjoying the game in this 40 degree temperature, might be up to 45 now with the sunshine. <laughs> See the flag a blowing. Another pleasant day in the North Country. White throat. Gay sends it in. A high lofter. The wind is going to hold up and allow Holbert to grab it. Ball comes into Latrimore. House charged into. Eagles put it right back in play. White throw. Let's see. 31. That's about 13 minutes left in the second half.
Goal kick for the Warriors. Headed by Latrimore. Now good row. Warriors send it up. House lifts it. Wind carries it. It goes off the head of Gay. She gets bumped. Dupree giving chase. Now Gay kicks it. And we have a whistle. Offside probably. Warriors will put it back in play. Two nothing. Willsboro leading in this section seven class B championship game. About eleven to twelve minutes remaining. Ledoux couldn't keep it in play. White throw. White throw. Headed by Ledoux. Whistle. Mm -hmm. I uh, shut the camera off our earplug tangled in our hand and not sure if we came on just in time to see the kick or just after the actual impact of the kick but we saw the ball go in it's now three nothing Willsboro if we battle the elements out here trying to bring you this game so it looks like there's about 10 minutes or so left in the Shazy season a very successful season they were tied for the number two seed in the Section 7 Class D playoffs. They're losing to a very good team. They've had a, a couple of very successful years prior to this. The latter. So nothing to hang their heads about. It's a windy day. Goal that Willsboro scored. No telling how much of an impact that had here in the second half. Willsboro picked up from that goal and has put two more in. First goal coming at the last second or two in the first half. Gay. Giroux shoots and the wind carries it wide. It's not the first time that's happened to the Eagles today. It's a goal kick. And the wind really whipping at the moment. Plants at the flag out straight. Souza makes a stop on a nice shot that lands at her ankles. Oh, her clearing kick bounces off a warrior. White throw. Much more goes to Ledoux with a goal kick. 
Jay-Z's not had much luck clearing the ball out on the goal kicks with this wind today on, from this end of the field. So trying to go to the side where the wind is blowing, you should do like Willsboro did and actually take it on the far side where the wind takes it, but at least you can get more distance before it goes toward the end line. Green throw. Call goes against Shazy. Warriors will put it in play. Also try to clear it. Jay-Z throw comes into Latchmore. <clears throat> now good row. Dupre charging in. Warriors with the throw. House for the restart. And we're down to maybe three to four minutes, somewhere in that four minute range. With time remaining. Three nothing, Willsboro leads. Lots more. There's a shot. Drew can't get the shot off. Goodwill puts it in the air. Lynch and uh, Gay over there. There's Goodwill again. No. Dupree sends it wide. White kick. Herbert stops it. I'm not sure if it was Gay taking the shot. Yeah, I think it was. Uh, Drew had the pass. But Herbert makes the stop. We're continuing to battle the elements here and it's affecting our camera work. Call goes against Shay Z, it'll be white kick. Much more to Nevada. Two minute warning. White throw. The dude goes down. Corner kick for the Warriors. Approaching the one minute mark. There's the one minute warning.
Warrior fans are cheering, anticipating that final whistle. seconds. All right, Chasey. The reign as Division Section 7 Class D champions will come to an end. The Willsboro Warriors are the champs. I think we'll stick around here and watch them get their championship black. Warriors over to accept it. There you have it, Willsboro, 2004, Section 7, Class D champions. Number one seed for the season, and they defeated the defending, two-time defending champion, Shazy Eagles. That's the way it was. Saturday, November 6, 2004, it's actually 1.47. We're still on Daylight Saving Time here on Hopetown Cable. Thanks for watching. For those of you supporting viewer-supported local television, TV worth your support. Win or lose, Hometown Cable. This is Calvin Castine. We're in Windy Pickett's Corners at Saranac Central School, beautiful downtown Pickett's Corners. We're in a Saturday, the sixth day of November 2004 for the Section 7 Class D Championship game between the Willsboro Warriors and the Shazy Central Rural School Eagles. Eagles are defending champions. Wind is dying down a little bit. You might look at that flag straight out in the breeze and say, how can it be dying down? Well, <laughs> it is dying down a little bit compared to what it was before. Girls game was terrible as far as wind. Was terrible as far as the score goes too. I'm hoping that I'll have enough battery power to complete this game. These cold days, the batteries don't last as long as they 
to do on a milder day. And uh, certainly possible that we would run out of batteries before this game is over. Which is one of the many reasons why I prefer that this game be played at Seton Catholic or with the option at Northeastern Clinton. But uh, Northeastern uh, has been an option for night games ever since they got lights back in 89 or 90. Well, probably 90. I guess 90 they put them up. So this is the 15th 15th season that they've had lights available and they've section has never seen fit to play a sectional game there, championship game. Uh, people have told me with a straight face it's because of the wind. Well, let me tell you, the wind blows just as hard here at Pickett's Corners than it does at Northeastern. And it's usually a few degrees colder here than it is at Northeastern. So, do the math and you'll find out you'll be just as frigid, if not frigider, here at Pickett's Corners. It's usually a lot colder than it here is here than it is in Champlain. Because of the elevation, we're, we're not only near the river here, but we're also climbing up the mountains or in the elevation, higher elevation. It snowed here last night in the snow in Champlain. So we've been told that with a straight face that the, one of the reasons not to do it in Champlain was the, the wind. Another one was that Saranac is closer for teams like Willsboro, Whale. Well, we uh, got on the north way today, off Route 11 in Champlain. It took us 17 minutes to get to where we were getting off, heading for the Cutieville Expressway. And 18 minutes later, we were parking our car here in... Uh, the Saranac High School parking lot. So time-wise, it's roughly the same coming down the Northway. If you stay on the Northway, go to Champlain or get off the Northway, drive through Katyville at 35 mile an hour speed limit, drive Route 3 with the curves. So time-wise, roughly the same. Stay on the Northway, go to Champlain, get off the Northway, come here to Pickett's Corners. And the reason I complain is because that's where they expect me to take from, right there, up there in the, in the wind, out in the open, with no uh, booth. I don't care what the fans <laughs> put up with. If it's cold or windy, it's cold or windy here. It's cold or windy in Champlain. I'm going to put up with the same thing, but uh, it's not raining today at this point. It was raining off and on during the girls' game. Right now it's stopped. The cl uh, clouds have given way to partially blue skies. So we're not going to worry about the rain. The rain would have made it impossible to tape out on the field the wind when you're trying to stay as perfectly still as you can and you got to put up with the wind and the cold makes for a long day and if you don't try it pick a day in the, about 40 degrees with strong wind and go out there and stand still for four and a half hours and <laughs> had a fellow who was an alternate referee tell me last year after he left the game here he went down to one of the local gas stations, probably that one that says seven hours, seven days, eleven hours a day, or whatever, 7-Eleven. You got it written on it, it's not a 7-Eleven store, but they're trying to convince travelers it is. Anyway, he went down there, bought some coffee, and took him half an hour just to defrost after standing out here on the sideline. And he can jump up and down. That was one game. He could jump up and down 
I can't jump up and down and stay warm because this is what you get for a picture. So that's my complaint of the day. Absolutely no reason that they have to take to uh, play these games at Saranac. They could find a, a site that's more suitable for videotaping coverage. And every argument I've heard has no foundation to it when you, when you really think about it. Anyway, we're here to cover this game. The Shazy Girls lost to, to the Warriors, the girls, in their game. Wellsboro looking to make it two titles. Shazy, of course, had two titles last year. Spiegel got it right above the eye. McAuliffe makes the stop for Willsboro. The reason we are standing where we are, because we are out of the wind here, we're in the dugout at the end of the end of the soccer field. We can't see the score clock, but uh, keeps us out of the wind and allows us to cover this without worrying about catching pneumonia. And if it should start to rain, well, we've got the the dugout to keep the raindrops off us. Ryan on the wing, cleared by the Warriors. There's Ashline. Win a big factor in the previous game. Can't say it favored either team, obviously, when it wind blows sideways, but definitely a big factor when you're trying to kick and control the ball. And This is McAuliffe here. That's <laughs> Shazy shooting this way. That's uh, Martin at the other end for Shazy. Red throw. Red throw. There's Seymour stopped by McCalla. Nice shot there by Justin Seymour. <laughs> 